Royal answered her without hesitation as he walked towards me. Oh my god, it's so cute! Ah! What's up guys, my name is Roy Dragon and welcome back to Locked Heart. So last we left off, um, we had a little encounter with the toy maker. And they told us she they told us everything about what happened. They showed us what happened in the past and why Royal blames himself for why gold what happened to gold. And yeah, all that stuff happened. Stuff went down. Yeah. Um is gonna continue on forward you know with the rest of the story after my encounter with the toy maker it felt like I had reached a dead end how can Royal obtain gold's forgiveness when gold herself remains a lifeless doll I roamed around the halls as I tried to think of a way to solve the dilemma what am I supposed to do now I couldn't just hide behind gold and pretend to forgive Royal for her could I this way I was startled as I heard a familiar voice echoing from the library. Gold? I dashed into the library. There I found a faint image of a girl who with golden of a little girl with golden locks standing beside a certain bookshelf. She pointed at it before it completely disappeared. Before she completely disappeared. Gold must have hidden something here. Maybe it could help me break the curse. With so many books neatly placed on the shelf, I was pretty sure it would take me a while. Um, crap. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's just too tough. I was pretty sure it would take me a while, especially when I had no idea what to look for in the first place. You should have at least given me a clue or something. With a heavy sigh, I looked at the shelves, determined to find whatever it was that ne she needed me to find. Now, now where should I look first? Um, I'm gonna say for- Well, look at the top part. Might as well start from the top. I've checked the books from the tarp- They got a top part, but I couldn't find anything at all. There was nothing special tucked away in any of the books. Aw, that sucks. Phew, I'm finally down to my last one. Sighing, I scalded the title of the dusty book in my hand. How to grow roses successfully. Considering how beautiful the rose garden is, I don't think they'd have much use for this book. Sighing curiously, I opened it and gasped as something inside nearly fell out. I caught in my hand. It was a pressed rose with a note on the long stem. One word was written on it. Ooh. Smile. Oh, that's sweet! Oh, that's the book we were looking for because he want, she wants him to smile. We all want him to smile, am I right? That's so cute. Oh, gold. That's cute. Is this what gold wanted me to find? Hey. Oops. <laughs> I jumped when I heard his familiar voice, but forgot that I was still standing on the ladder. Yeah! Aura! I tried to hold on to the shelf to regain my balance, but instead I only pulled it down with me. Uh oh, she fell! Oh no! With my heart in my throat, the last thing I saw on the sh was a shelf, moving dangerously over me before I slipped into darkness. Uh oh. Aura? Who's calling my name? Aura! When I opened my eyes, my head was throbbing with pain. As my eyes finally adjusted, the first thing I saw was War Royal's worried face. Royal! He looked like he was about to cry. I must have hit my head too hard because there's no way I'd ever see Royal like this if it was a minor bump. My hands automatically reached for my head, feeling the bandages that wrapped around it. I did hit my head too hard. I tried recalling what had happened before I blacked out. An image of gold flashed in my mind. Remembering gold, I quickly sat up and frankly searched for the book, now relaxing until I realized that it was cradled in my arms. What were you thinking? Royal's expression shifted from concern to anger, but his signature glare was somehow different. I couldn't help but apologize anyway. Sir! You were such a troublemaker. It was as though he was trying to reprimand me, but there was an unfamiliar softness softness to it that he only ever seemed to use when he talked to gold. 
I wanted to say something, but the words were caught in my throat. Royal's behavior caught me by surprise. Ooh, his usual bullying far outweighed the few times he expressed genuine kindness. His contradictory attitude confused me. When I saw that shell fall over you, when I saw that you were going to get hurt, I didn't know what to do. I'm actually made of steel, you know. I won't break that easily. I attempted to joke to ease the tension in the atmosphere, but Royal only squeezed my hand tighter. I thought I would lose you as well. My heart went wild. Royal, here's the soup you wanted for- The leaf rose by the doorway when she saw us. I could feel myself blushing and tried to yank my hand away, but still he refused to let go. Thank you, just place it on the table. Sure. Lily obediently left the soup on the table and quickly walked out, but not before my, me, casting me a mischievous smile that only made my face burn harder. Hey! No. Royal, your hand. Why is that book so important anyway? You refused to let it go, even while you were asleep. Royal turned back to me, completely ignoring my words. Royal's eyes widened as he looked at the items I showed him. He genuinely took the flower and letter from me, a faint smile dancing on his lips. This. I gave this to Gold back when she was so. she had been so upset because all the roses she was taking care of had wilted. I told her that it wasn't her fault, and that it was because the weather had been bad that season, so she shouldn't blame herself for what had happened. I finally understood why Gold wanted me to find it. Isn't that. the same for you? Royal looked puzzled at first, but his face slowly darkened in understanding. I told him about my encounter with the toy maker and witnessing the events of the past with her. I wasn't sure if he would eat. Ooh. Oh. Sorry. I wasn't sure if he would even believe everything I told him. But as I finished, his face twisted in surprise. If only I had the courage to help that woman, we wouldn't have been in this situation. Everyone was would have still be here. Yen Gold wouldn't have to suffer. It was Gold who wanted me to find this. I think she wants to give this to you for the same reason you gave this to her. No matter how much you wanted to change the past, the outcome would still be the same. And that's because the problem lied with Lord Deluxe, not you. So please, stop blaming yourself. Royal squeezed the note in his hand, his body trembling. A single tear rolled down his cheek. Oh, Royal! My heart swelled, knowing that Royal had finally gotten Gold's message for him. I absentmindedly placed with my locket, hearing a soft crack as I did so. My heart. This is. Without thinking, I jumped up and ran toward Gold's room, ignoring Royal's protests. Gold sat in her usual place, her loving blue eyes staring at me expectantly. She still looks so beautiful and surreal. I swallowed hard, with, and with trembling hands, I placed the locket around her neck. A golden light embraced and quickly surged out towards the rest of the room. Hey, we broke the curse! That was fast. Ha! I blinked a few times as the light blinded my eyes. As my vision cleared, I saw a beautiful young lady standing in front of me. Are you? It's gold! Thank you very much, Miss Aura, for giving me my heart back. Aura, what do you think you're- Royal stopped where he's, when he saw her. His face was a mixture of surprise and joy upon finally seeing that gold was human again. More loud footsteps followed Royal's, and soon everyone had piled into the room. Woo! What was that like just now? Gold smiled sweetly at everyone, tears streaming down her cheeks. Everyone, I'm back! Gold rushed to her family and all of them wrapped her in a tight embrace. My heart burst with happiness as I watched the family reunite. Oh, it's so cute! Their curse was finally lifted. Oh. A few days had passed since Gold became human again. The house had been bustling with activity since then. They've been trying to catch up after all those years of not being able to speak with her. There had apparently been a conflict between Sol and Dion that I wasn't aware of, 
now that gold was here, they were able to settle it for her sake. Oh yeah, the one of who's going to be the heir, Sol or Dion. And Sol was like, I didn't want to be the heir because Dion was being a freaking child. Uh, and blah, blah, blah. But Dion finally manned up and took the, took the, um, air, being the heir thing. Yeah. Well, when we go to Dion's route, we'll probably learn more. Anyway, things were finally back to normal for them. And it wouldn't be long before everyone found out the little locks curse had been lifted. I smiled in contentment as I watched them interact with each other, laughing and crying over afternoon tea. I was so glad that their nightmare was over and that they could go on with their lives at last. A sudden sadness swept over me. That meant I had to go on with my life as well. I didn't have a reason to stay here anymore. As I finished placing a few more desserts on the table, I caught sight of Royal, smiling at gold. My chest felt heavy as they recalled how hard I attempted to get him to laugh, yet Gold's mere presence was enough to make him smile so genuinely. It was something only she could do. I bit my lip. It was as though I was so far away from him now that Gold has come back. Then again, I was the outsider here in the first place. Oh, Aura. I reached for my chest, willing the ach aching feeling of jealousy to go away. Royal's eyes met mine. I gave him the best smile I could muster before turning to leave the room, empty platter in tow. I was walking down the hallway when I heard Royal call for me. Aura! I stopped and took a deep breath before facing him. What is it? Did I do something wrong again? I tried to sound like I was joking. It would have worked if only my voice hadn't cracked. Is something bothering you? It was weird hearing him ask me that. He had never been so concerned about my feelings before. Sorry, I was just thinking that I'll probably leave soon, now that everything is back to normal. You're probably relieved to hear that I won't be here to bother you anymore. But just the thought of leaving the place I had called home for the last few months hurt. Idiot. Do you really think that I want you to leave? Royal walked close to me and bent forward, closing the distance between us. I instinctively backed away. This would be usually be one of the times he would hit me, when instead I felt soft lips touch my forehead. Oh, that's cute! My heart started hammering against my chest. What was that for? Royal gazed at me, his cheeks slightly red. His lips curved into a small smile, a smile that I had thought was only reserved for gold. My heart skipped a beat. Or I... Royal? Where did you go? That voice... My heart sank. You have to go. Gold is looking for you. Royal opened his mouth as if he was about to say something, but I quickly cut him off. Go. I forced a smile, and then I left. No. Don't push him away like that. <laughs> my mind was set. I was going to go and fulfill my dream of becoming a chef. It hurt to leave everyone, and I didn't have a place here anymore. Everyone had asked me to stay. Even Royal, but I've already made my decision. I had just finished cleaning the room that I had stayed in for months. I hadn't brought anything with me. My bag had been left behind somewhere in the forest, so packing wasn't a problem. Although, Miss Maria did allow me to take some of her clothes. I looked around my room one last time. I'm really going to miss this place. There was a soft knock, and Cold popped her head into the room. Miss Aura, may I? Sure, and please, just Aura is fine. Gold stepped inside, feeling her fingers nervously. Are you... are you really going to leave us? Everyone has done so much for me. I'm truly thankful for that, but I can't stay here anymore, Gold. But it's the other way around! If it wasn't for you, the curse wouldn't have been broken. I owe you my life, Aura. I waved my hands in front of me, embarrassed by her words. You don't owe me anything at all. An awkward silence fell over us. How about Royal? You can't just leave him, can you? My chest tightened. Royal and I have never been on good terms with each other. But then, I remembered what Royal had said before wanting me to stay. Gold walked towards me and took my hand in hers, her eyes shining with determination. My heart does not lie, Aura. I know how you feel about him. My heart has spent quite some time near yours due to the curse, after all. I opened my mouth to protest, but the loud thumping in my chest insisted she was right, and that I couldn't deny it anymore. 
I was in love with Royal, but his heart belonged to her. I don't want Royal to be sad again. Not after he finally found someone he really cares about. Huh? That's, not, that's impossible. It's obvious that you're the one he, kill, he loves. Gold gave me a look, as though I had just said the most absurd thing in the world. You've got it wrong, Royal. Royal did tell me once that he wanted to marry me when we were young. But that's in the past now. And what feelings has he has for me isn't love, but guilt. Besides, I've seen how he looks at you. It's the same way Lily looks at Big Brother Soul. No! No! I couldn't help but feel embarrassed, yet a part of me didn't want to believe her. Royal was so dedicated to gold that I doubted his feelings would change just like that. I jumped when I noticed that Royal was standing by my door. Oh, speak of the devil. Do you need to talk to gold? Royal looked at me seriously. I need to talk to you, Laura. Gold gave me a triumphant smile, as if telling me that she was right, before scampering out of my room to leave us alone. However, once in the hallway, she paused and smiled at Royal. Royal, you now have a new princess to protect. I do. Oh, that's cute! Royal answered her without hesitation as he walked towards me. Oh my god, it's so cute! Ah! I guess when I felt his warm, soft lips on mine. All too soon, he had pulled away, cheeks flushed. I was sure that my face must have matched his color. Matched his in color. I told myself a long time ago that I would no longer let myself get close to anyone. I closed my heart because I was afraid of lo losing someone important to me again. The more I cared about others, the more I'd be hurt when I lost them. But when it came to you, it was just so difficult to keep my vow. You constantly got on my nerves, and you didn't know when to give up. Then I found myself drawn to you. Royal. Is it okay for me to be selfish just this once? Sometimes I just want to keep you to myself and never let you go. Deep down, I already knew the answer. Idiots, you don't have to ask because I might end up being even more selfish. Oh, that's adorable! <laughs> I was once again pursuing my chef dream to become a chef, but I was no longer alone. I now had Royal by my side. He had given up his role as the deluxe butler to come fulfill my dreams with me. Oh, that's nice! It had been a rough start, but with the deluxe support, we were finally able to open a small restaurant. Ah! That, that's cute! Stop it! What do you think? Today was Gold's 18th birthday, and they had asked me to provide the food for their guests. It would be, also be a good opportunity to showcase what our restaurant has to offer. Too sweet. Eh? But I made sure that I got the measurements right. Where did I go wrong? Royal laughed. I was only kidding. It's perfect. I pouted. You're being mean to me again! I can't help it. You're cute when you're flustered. See? Just like that. Idiot. Aww! Royal leaned in and kissed me. <laughs> I knew it. Knew what? You taste sweeter than the cake. Oh, <laughs> My face burned at his words. Royal! Royal laughed again. He's more vibrant now. Nothing like the old grumpy bear I had met a year ago. The deluxe curse had changed my life so much. I wouldn't have met Royal, not to mention everyone who had helped me along the way, if I hadn't stumbled upon their mansion. mansion. And now, I'm looking forward to making more wonderful memories with the person I love. I got the best end! Yay! Alright, Royals Road is done! That was so adorable and everything! Oh my gosh, oh. Royal seemed very, very cute. Even though he was kind of Sooner-ish, but still, he was really cute. That's surprising, I thought Royal would turn from the grumpy bear into his normal self. Oh well. <laughs> Maybe when I start up the game again. Who knows? Um, yeah, but that was Royal's route. We finished his route! Woo! I have to say, oh my gosh, he's so so adorable and so cute. Like, he, got, he gets so mad and stuff, and then later on he opens up his heart. But I get what he's saying. Like, he lost a lot of people, so he closed himself in. And that's how he became so Sundari-ish. <laughs> but I understand. He, he's too cute. I can't, I can't get that out of my head. 
All right, so we have one route left, and that is Dion's route. Woo, we get to play with the fart. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all of you have been waiting for Dion's route as well. So, um, yeah, we're gonna in the next video, we will be starting Dion's route. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys like to see more of my videos, then click subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!